Cast iron cornbread. What's the secret? Bacon grease. But don't forget the green chilies. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a beautiful morning. Oh my goodness, we got a little rain in places. It is nice and cool. You seen Mage there, he be looking really bad. Mm, he got drowned by the dew. I was gonna say something, I'm sorry, okay? I don't know what was it was. Is that like a dramatic pause? <laughs> yes, I don't know. I was gonna move the butter. Folks, this is the easiest dish that you can cook in a Dutch oven as a beginner, and I'll walk you through that as we begin to bake this, but cornbread has always been a staple on wagon. When I was cooking on ranches, I always made cornbread at least maybe three times a week because cowboys really like it, and you can put a lot of stuff with some cornbread to make a full-blown meal, but the best thing you can do to cook cornbread is what? Cook it in cast iron. Cup of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. And I want to ask y'all a question, and y'all can leave a comment down there below. Yellow or white? You know, when you look at something, they all taste the same. But I grew up eating yellow cornbread, and the first time I ever seen white cornbread, I'm thinking, I don't know, does that look good? Do I, do I need it? But it all tasted the same. It's just preference of what you have. And speaking of preferences, when I be preferring me I wanting a shirt, I do, I be choosing area because folks, they always fit so good. They have the kind that are, you never have to iron. And that is a big deal to me because I don't like to iron. It's wrinkle free. I can hang it in the closet, throw it in the back of the pickup, bring it out here, put it on, and it is good to go. So I really thank the folks at Ariat for making me look good and comfortable because that's what they are. Back to some salt we are. We're going to have how much? Y'all go ahead and say it. You stand it on the hay bale back there in the back. That is right. Just the right amount. And to that, some baking powder. Be sure and check your date on your baking powder because I have used it before to where you'd be thinking that bread did not rise what it should have been. So always check the date on it. I prefer Clever Girl. We're going to put about four teaspoons, which is if you measure that out exactly, <laughs> we're going to just do a little scientific experiment if we knew where the measuring spoons was. True. Folks, you ever seen that show Mythbusters? You know, <laughs> Shan does not trust me here. I want to see it like. There's one. Okay. Two. Okay. It's gonna be close. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be close. Three. Eh. What was on my hand is time we get that I mean, in there. It's, it's pretty, yeah, you're a little off, but kind of close. On behalf of Shan and all the folks who like Jiffy cornbread mix and have it a little sweeter, we're gonna put a third of a cup of sugar oh, in wow, there. Oh wow, that is sweet. Just for you, Shan, just for you. Get her all mixed up dries in so let's get the wet started here we have one cup of milk which is leaked a little out here because look here i want to show y'all something see where the handle broke off of it oh. the cow is leaking so we're going to have to make that up here in just a second to that one hen fruit cackleberry rooster bullet from gladys and the girls so i always like to start right there where that egg was and just go ahead and get it mixed first and then just begin to whisk that on around here. One of my favorite people in the world, and they're not paying me to say it, hatch green chilies. Go ahead and put them in there. And I got to thinking to myself, you know, self, a lot of people add oil to cornbread. Yeah. But I've got to thinking, what would be better than oil that's going to make cornbread even more light and fluffy? Butter one third of a cup make sure that it is not hot hot okay i got my finger in there it's warm but it's not going to hurt you that bad now you can see how that changed it just a little but not much with that butter in there but when we're talking about cornbread and we're talking about something that i want to eat all the time i need a little more in it than that know what i mean mage what do you think we should have in there huh mage says we should have bacon now if i'm going to use bacon I'm gonna use thick cut bacon. I never was a fan of that bacon that you could see through. So make sure you get good quality bacon when you're doing this because it's gonna make a lot of difference. But guess what else we need? We need that bacon grease. So this is extra, really an extra plus that we're just not only adding the bacon, but we're getting the flavor of the grease because we gotta have that for that cornbread. I used, you can use anywhere from six to eight slices. I used about six today. And 
you know, let me just get this in there. Let's go ahead and get this on mixed up in there. Now I can remember one time on a ranch when we was in the Paladura Canyon, one of the first years that I ever cooked there it was in December. Uh, we'd been in about 10 days and we was doing three weeks and whew, come a blizzard. I mean, wind blowed, snow drifts five, six foot high there for a little ways. And we had to stay extra days and it got down there where it was to the end and things was running a little short and was the last meal, noon, was gonna break camp, get out of there right before Christmas and go home. I got to looking in that old gray box that I had for what I was gonna make for lunch and you know there just wasn't a lot of offerings there. There was a pound of hamburger meat in the ice chest, a pound of sausage. There was two sacks of yellow corn meal, onion, some green chilies, and some what? Canned corn. So I'm thinking, Folks, we're just gonna have to do this like it is. Cooked up the bacon, then I saved that grease, put a little in there to cook that with, made gravy to go on that. Hamburger meat and sausage, browned it up, put it all back in there together. Put it in a 16 inch Dutch oven. It got about that tall in there and it was about this big around. Fed 12 cowboys. So folks, really when you look at stuff and you think, well, I need to go to the store, look around a little more. That's where stuff comes to you and it just jumps out at you and you think, I can create that and it will be good. You never know. And get you some cowboys. They're the best thing in the world to experiment with. Now, if you're gonna do this in the house, and that's fine, preheat that oven to 400 degrees, get you a 10 inch cast iron skillet, or if you're cooking it outside, use you a 10 inch oven. Remember that bacon grease that we had left over from that bacon? We don't want it all, but we want about that much. And folks, I'm gonna tell you this right now, this is where you gotta get your hands just a little bit greasy because I want you to grease the sides, everything up here. Just make sure that it gets around there everywhere. Not only is the bacon grease gonna give us flavor in here, it's gonna help us create a frying effect on the bottom to where we get that good crispy, crispy crust. But be careful, it might burn. So we better pay attention. Little tip for you folks, whether you're baking cakes or you're baking cornbread and you get it in your oven or your skillet, I need you just to make sure that it is sort of tamped down in there. It sort of gets everything set where it's supposed to be, but it's also gonna help that cake when you're cooking it, get some air bubbles out of it so things don't just make an air pocket in there and you got nothing left but a hollow spot in there and you're thinking, what the heck happened to my cake? So cornbread, little shake, I'll meet you over our trivet and we're gonna show you how to cook the easiest thing in the world in a Dutch oven and that is cornbread. So, tall trivet. That's what I prefer if you're a first time user baking cornbread. And when I'm talking tall, it is five inches. Lay it out there, get you a good spot on the ground. If you're cooking in sort of wet conditions like it was this morning, I had that one covered. The ground is dry, so we're not wasting any heat. Place your trivet, make sure it is level when you are cooking cakes, cornbread, stuff like that, so it don't be leaning one way or the other. We want a consistent thickness throughout. Set her on the trivet. Get you a shovel full of them coals, sift the ash out of it, okay? Remember, it's got them holes in the bottom of that shovel. Sift it out of there, because we're wanting live coals, not ash. Pretty good layer around the outside edge of that Dutch oven, heavy on top. Now, say we didn't have no trivet. We didn't even have three rocks. We was cooking in the desert, and there wasn't nothing to be found to make a trivet with. So, we would put it on the ground. I would back the coals off probably about that much from the outside edge, and they would be light. But remember, you can bring that heat to it if you need more, or you can scoot it back away from it. But start out with less than you need because you can always add to it, and if it's burnt, it's done too late. But hey, we'll check it. Ain't much wind today, so we won't have to rotate too much. We'll keep an eye on it. I just like to scoot everybody back to where I know when I take that lid off, there's not going to be any ashes in there. So let's just see if any fall up in there. No, they did not. So you can see Ooh, things are happening. bacon grease. I mean, it is doing some good, it is. We're gonna go ahead and give it a quick rotate. When you rotate an oven that way, you're just moving it around halfway most of the time, and then we'll move the lid halfway back around. It evens out any hot spots you have in cold placement, where if you have one hotter side than the other side. And you can always tell by the way something's baking if one side is ahead of the other. Be sure and rotate to get that around there to where everybody evens out. You can see when we took that lid off there that one side had started separating. Uh, separating, you mean like far apart? No, 
like you could see a little bit of space coming in around that oven between it and the cornbread. What cast iron is trying to tell you there is, hey, listen to me. The bottom is near done on that side. So I rotated it around because still the other side, the opposite side, it still likes just a little. So I'm going to move some of these coals away from the side that is near done on the bottom, leave them on the other side. I know the bottom is getting close due to the separation around of the cornbread beginning to shrink. That is the cast iron telling me that, hey, it is getting close. So we're going to put the lid on here and we're going to get us some good hot coals to put on top. We're very close on the bottom. I figure we're about five minutes out. I mean, it's what's happening, it is. Did y'all see me over there check that top? Put my hand on it, got a little spring in it. It was bending brown just right there in the middle. We took it off that bottom because you can feel that set up firm and it's got separation all the way around. Put me some more hot coals right on top. The Leah there, Larry cook for about another five minutes and voila, what do we have? We have cornbread, yes we do. Let but, me do the big reveal of what the bottom looks like. What, what are you thinking? I don't know. <gasps> look at I that mean, that is what you call uniform now when i was judging dutch oven people from cooking i would never just check one piece i would check all sides to see oh. if it was what you call uniform wow so that way you know you're cooking with pretty even heat that's why we rotate but folks you can see as this is glistening in here a little bit never leave cornbread in here it'll sweat go ahead and take it out of there place it on something a wire rack wrap it in a cup towel something because that cornbread is going to sweat if you leave it in a dutch oven very long or a skillet shan this is for you because it's got a little sugar in it honey mm. Folks, that is some kind of that good. Might be the best cornbread I ever eat or made in my life. And I have made many a Dutch oven. It gets me to thinking of the cornbread chorus line. I love me some cornbread. I love me some cornbread. It is good. I have cracked cornbread open on cornbread judging. And when you do this, it's just goes to just sort of crumbling out of there. It's too dry. That's when you have to add 38 pounds of gravy to get it where you can chew it. Now I got two little bites here cooling for my two little helpers. Shan's gonna flash you a picture up there when you're wondering why the other two was not here. They have been grounded. They have because it makes twice we've come and three times we've give baths because they've been in the muddy water. There you go, Big, I know you like cornbread. Where's my Meiji? Tell y'all a quick story on the Big. We're not too far from a senior citizens deal and they be eating down there a lot. I looked up the road one day and I could see Big was bringing something back, but I wasn't know for sure what it was because he's always bringing presents. But I looked up and he had a big old piece of cornbread. Now, it might not have been fresh. It was pretty dry because it was been, but that pup do love him some cornbread. It is with great pride and honor that I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp wherever me and Shan are at. Hey, we want to thank the folks at Area 2 for always keeping us looking good. And folks, we thank y'all so much for always watching our videos. Be sure and share the food and the videos. And guess what? I'll see you down the best cornbread you ever eat in your life trail.